Hello everyone and welcome to Bywire Interviews. Uh, my name is Michael O'Sullivan and I'm exceptionally pleased to be joined by none other than Dan Larimer once again for his third interview with Bywire News. Dan, how are you and welcome. I'm doing great, thank you for having me. It's always our pleasure, Dan, really is. Thank you so much for, uh, for being so kind with your time and coming back on a third time, we really appreciate it. So I'm gonna just jump into the question straight away, if that's okay. Now, Dan, you recently stated on uh, Telegram that you feel Brock Pierce doesn't respect Depos um, and doesn't have the best interests of EOS at heart. So I just wondered, what did you mean by that? Uh, I was responding to some of his tweets with respect to the network taking the EOS tokens or freezing the EOS tokens uh, that were vesting from block one. Um, I think if you're respecting Depos, then you take it in stride and you acknowledge that it was legitimate uh, and it's not a problem with the network. That's the consensus algorithm everyone has agreed to. Uh, and EOS has always been, and Delegate Proof of Stake has always been designed uh, to um, allow token holders to have sovereignty. Um, and that's how you deal with bad actors. That's part of the security model of Delegated Proof of Stake systems is that if there is a bad actor that is using their stake uh, in a way that's harmful to the network. The network has the ability to slash them uh, for their behavior. And it can do so in a subjective manner. It's a subjective slashing instead of an objective slashing. Uh, and so on Ethereum and other proof of stake networks, uh, you know, a bad actor doing something is I guess, more objective uh, losses that can occur, but it's still taking tokens that belong to someone because you don't like the behavior they were doing. It's just it's whether it's a, a subjective behavior or a subjective behavior. So when I, when I see Brock Pierce uh, tweeting certain things and acting a certain way, uh, and, you know, it's understandable that he's upset uh, given that you know, it, it is gonna have some economic consequences to him, but it's sort of a, a, a double standard. One day he's argu arguing for the sovereignty of the network and the next day, uh, when the network turns against a deal that he arranged, uh, yeah, he's not so happy with it. So I think it's just a matter of being consistent um, and, and so forth. The other, ask, other part of that comment I made was with respect to the uh, my general feelings about the structure of Helios. Uh, it's just EOS VC with new management. Uh, the incentives are for them to invest in projects that make Helios money which make Brock Pierce money. It's all good to have people do that, but it's a private fund that's going to invest in private businesses expecting a return for them. It's not a fund that's going to invest in public goods for the benefit of all the EOS token holders. They're gonna be primarily concerned with, with getting value returned to the Helios project um, rather than value returned to EOS token holders. So then, Dan, do you think Brock was being perhaps somewhat hypocritical then, um, given that he, I believe he was also in favor of freezing those tokens um, back in the summer? So do you think there was a little bit of um, hypocrisy there? That's what I was pointing out. Um, yeah. Just providing that context. You know, I, you know Brock talks, uh, he really supports EOS. He named his daughter uh, after EOS. Um, so... He's obviously committed and passionate and tied his reputation and, and, and does those things. So I'm not trying to say anything negative against Brock as a person, but more of like this, the hypocritical statements uh, and, um, and positions in his uh, reaction to what the network ultimately did. So do you think then Helios as a organization would be a net benefit to the EOS community or a net negative? Um. It could be either one, right? It all depends on how the people in charge ultimately decide to utilize the funds. I, I was merely pointing out that the incentives for Helios are just, just as misaligned as the incentives for Block One. Uh, in fact, all Block One did was uh, transfer their tokens to Helios with the expectation that Brock would take on the obligations that Block One uh, had to the community, at least in the my eyes of the community. So Bach inherited those obligations in an unofficial manner, but the misalignment is 
still there. You just have somebody who's willing to be a little bit more public in supporting the yes. Um, but you know, same same economic incentives will probably produce similar outcomes. Um, so, what what was the what what's the, um, the what did he inherit then? Um, what were the requirements? Are you talking about developing EOS IO? Um, and if so, wasn't that really an area for the EOS Network Foundation to to focus on? So, I just wondered what your thoughts are really on the whole deal and the outcome of the deal. He, in he inherited whatever public expectations there were for Block One to do something in exchange for the ten percent. Um, that the network allocated to block one. Um, obviously there's no clear objective contract between block one and the community. The community launched the chain on their own. They allocated tokens to block one and block one indicated that they would continue to support EOSIO and develop it for 10 plus years uh, to the extent that block one is uh, not developing EOSIO for use on public networks uh, and is now moving toward private networks. Um, you know, there's, you know, certain people in the community that are clearly, uh, the outcome didn't match their expectations, whether those expectations were legitimate or not, doesn't change the, um, the frustration that people have with what's happening. And it doesn't change the expectation that they would have for block one to, so not block one, for block, Brock to take on the unreasonable expectations or, um, yeah. That they had with block one. So I think that when block one transferred or sold the vesting tokens before they had vested to another party, there was an expectation that uh, all those things followed through. And that's why Brock announced Helios and announced all the things he was going to do for the benefit of, of the EOS token holders. It's really to reverbalize and recommit to the commitments that block one uh, had expressed with EOS VC. Um, so there's a lot of moving parts here, and I want to make it very clear that, uh, you know, as we all would have liked different things to have happened with, with Block One, but I don't necessarily believe they're bad actors uh, in, in any sense of the word. It's more um, misaligned interest. You can't serve two masters. So did you, um, did, given the circumstances that it happened under, did, did you back the block producer's decision to freeze the uh, tokens? Um, or did you think maybe that decision was rash? Um, I published a blog post a while back, uh, backing the legitimacy of the block producers to take either action and encouraging them to be very careful uh, in doing so because it could impact the reputation of the network. Uh, the network's reputation is going to be impacted whether they do something or not. Uh, and it's a subjective judgment call of whether it's better for the network to declare its independence from block one, uh, or if it's better for the network to defend code as law and immutability um, of, of those things. I think a commitment, I think changing contract and taking decisive action and empowering EOS Network Foundation gives EOS a decisive vision, even if it's now more centralized than ever. I mean, the problem with EOS is it's so decentralized, nothing could get done. That leads to stagnation uh, and inability to act, which basically favors the status quo. But if nothing changes, nothing changes. So uh, I, I stayed out of the negotiations between Block One, uh, Brock Pierce and the EOS Network Foundation. Uh, and I'm only advocating for the sovereignty of of the blockchain token holders and to respect that if the elected block producers uh, choose to take a particular action to enforce intent of code as law, uh, then that's what it, they should do. EOS is always pitched as the governed blockchain. It's now exercising its governance powers uh, to impose the greatest penalty on, on actors more so than the class action lawsuit or SEC. So it's, uh, free market uh, doing its thing to look after the interest of everyone. Um, so I don't see it as, um, you know, there's no point in making anyone right or wrong. It's just a matter of consensus building over who has what property rights. Um, and when you get moralistic about, no, this is what I have, well, you have to acknowledge that people can have disagreements over what the nature of the agreement was and 
what you're entitled to. And that disagreement does not make either side right or wrong. It just means there's a need to reach consensus and resolve the dispute. And that's exactly what the block producers did. They reached consensus and resolved the dispute in a particular direction. Um, and so I support uh, that and I support um, decentralized communities being autonomous and sovereign and not subject to code. Um, you know, the code is a tool of the people to reach consensus. It is not um, binding on the people. Um, so um, when was the last time you spoke with Brendan, the CEO of um, Block One? Um, and over, what would you give his tenure out of 10, um, 10 being the best uh, as he's uh, as the CEO of B1? Look, Brendan had a really challenging job from taking a company of a dozen people or so that suddenly thrust into billions of dollars and navigating, hiring uh, people with sufficient reputation and skill to navigate the regulatory framework and hold on to those billions of dollars and protect the EOs from becoming a security. Uh, there could have been far worse outcomes, both for Block One and the community without the effort and leadership that Brendan provided in that department. Um, that said, I think you can judge uh, the management by the fruit. Uh, you know, people at Block One seem to be leaving in large numbers, particularly people passionate about EOS. Uh, you know, I was among the first, um, but uh, you, you can see from, from employee reviews how they feel about working at Block One. Um, so, uh, yeah, I think bullish is going to be successful uh, just based on the economics alone. They're using a, a powerful market making algorithm with safe margin lending that I invented. Uh, and you know, they're using traditional technologies with a sprinkle of blockchain mixed in, um, but that doesn't change the economics and the likely success of bullish. And as a shareholder in block one, you should you can't complain with the performance that Brendan has provided for you. So um, Eve said a few months back that B1 in his mind was uh, EOS and, def and they were acting fraudulent and negligent. Um, so I just wondered, do you agree with Eve's that B1 were acting fraudulent and negligent or is that maybe too far? Uh, I disagree. I think the terms of the token sale were quite clear and you know what the expectations were block one would build the software and deliver the software and it needed an initial token distribution so it auctioned it off the fact that the auction produced billions of dollars well that's the free market being crazy right <laughs> um, it doesn't change the obligation of block one to deliver software what did block one deliver it delivered the fastest uh, you know most scalable and in my opinion powerful for development platform out there and it did so in the first year and then continued to deliver it in the second year so the, the first two years i was there we delivered the software that allowed the community to build and deploy and the network has operated incredibly reliably uh, for most of its existence with only minor hiccups along the way so I think from a, delivering the software that allowed a community to launch, it was incredibly successful. And Block One never promised to launch any token or to make any particular token grow in value. Uh, now people will say, well, there's implied, they said they're gonna do EOS VC with, with $1 billion into the EOS ecosystem. And there's, there can be some disputes about whether or not investments in voice and bullish uh, and, and the other ESVC projects actually met the expectations of, of people. But to say that there was fraud, I, uh, SEC found no fraud. I think there's no fraud. Um, but just because there's no fraud doesn't mean there's not, you know, many, many, many disappointed people who had hoped that Block One would be generous and use the, the windfall they received to, to give back. So just to, to conclude this part of the this first part of the interview, I just wanted to know. Obviously, you would have heard about the death, the alleged death threats made from Brock onto Eves, um, and I just wondered what was your take on that. And then more broadly, it's clear the community is somewhat fractured. So I just wondered what can you, what can I do, what can we all do to try and 
bring the community back together? Oh, I wasn't on the call, so I haven't seen, uh, you know, I don't have any firsthand knowledge of the death threats. Uh, There's just, you know, many witnesses reporting what the threats were and, you know, you know what I've, I've seen. So um, I think it's probably best not to comment on things that I don't have firsthand knowledge of. <clears throat> um, but if those death threats are real, I see no reason to pressure people like Eve and the you know, Network Foundation, the block producers to attempt to reconcile, um, you know, with someone who, uh, you know, in their opinion, uh, was making threats uh, and, and or was uh, intoxicated in some manner uh, and doesn't remember making said threats. Uh, so, you know, let people be. There's no, no need to force a kumbaya between everyone. Uh, it's just there's a disagreement over what the um, behavior was. And Brock's a controversial character. He always has been. Um, and he's a very passionate person. Uh, so you, you take the good with the bad. Sometimes our tempers run high. Um, so let's move on to something a lot more exciting, a lot more positive. So could you tell us what your future vision and roadmap is for EOS? I think you alluded to Twitter, there was a whole new roadmap ahead and we're really excited to hear more about that. 